two best teams in the NBA at this point. Both teams have won and can win on each other's floors. Now it's our turn to see how we're going to handle uh, our loss and how we're going to respond. It's NBA tonight. Heat and Spurs gearing up for game three, often the most important of the series. Records fell at the Alamo as the Spurs were hitting on all cylinders. Ginobili the fake. Ginobili to the basket and finish. The big three stepped up, but not the three you're thinking about. I'm talking Neil, Green, and Leonard. Find out how. It's NBA tonight. Let's do it. Welcome to NBA Tonight. Oh, yes, it was a three-point shooting clinic, and this man knows all about that. He's Tim Legler. I'm Todd Grisham. If you're a Miami Heat fan, viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Here we go, right into the highlights. Game three, and keep this in mind, the winner of game three when the series is tied 1-1 in that new format since 1985 goes on to win the series 92% of the time, Tim. It's a big number, big number, hinge game, without a doubt. There's a Duncan and Parker. They missed shoot around because they were caught in traffic, but they did arrive in time for the game. Jump in the HOV lane, man. Pick up Tiago's splitter and get in the HOV lane. You'll be, you'll be okay. It's not exactly New York or L.A. there in San Antonio. Spurs, bigs combined for 27 points, seven assists in game two. Game three, they came out swinging early. Tony Parker with a jumper and then Duncan for the jam. Attack in the lane, and they were doing it in different ways, not necessarily getting ball screens. They were doing it off dribble penetration in one-on-one -on -one situations. Ball faking right here, attack the defender when he gets up on his toes, no back line help, and Manu with some spring. Big three, 12.6 assists in the first quarter of game three. How about Miami? Dwayne Wade, strong first quarter. Yeah, he came out aggressive. He has not been playing well offensively, obviously, but I, he looked like he made a concerted effort to get himself going, attacking the rim with the reverse layup, and then getting in the gut of the defense, hitting Mike Miller with the cross-court pass. Mike Miller's always a good option when he's open. He never misses. Wade, eight points in the first quarter after scoring 10 total in game two. Under a minute in the first now. Spurs up to Tiago Splitter with the jam. Here's Eric Spolstra. What did you see? They're getting everything in the paint. So we're not doing any of the little things to take away the paint. Um, and they're getting in an incredible groove right now. Speaking of getting in the groove, here's Gary Neal. And he comes in and he always has it locked and loaded. He's ready to go as soon as he walks on the floor. Usually gets a shot off within 30 seconds. And when he gets the first couple to go, he is a scorer, a high volume guy. Put up big numbers in college so you know he can get it going if he gets opportunities. And he was feeling it in that first half. Gary Neal with 14 first half points. On the break now, oh, too easy. Kawhi Leonard with a long pass from Duncan. And then this happens with the clock winding down. James, hot step. Blocked by Green. Final seconds. Neal at the buzzer. Bang! Gary Neal finishes off a marvelous first half. Spurs led 50 to 44 at the half. Let's look at LeBron James' first half shot chart. We didn't talk about him at all in those highlights. No, he no aggressiveness whatsoever in his game as a scorer. You see the eight shots, but I just didn't think really any of those shots came as in an aggressive manner. They were more of an afterthought. They're daring him to shoot jumpers, and he couldn't knock them down. All right, let's see how he do in the second half. They were still in the game in the third quarter, down just six. There's a jumper there by Duncan from the elbow. They're hanging in there. It's only an eight-point game, but San Antonio really starting to get into a rhythm, and their three-point shooters now start to take off. Danny Green from deep when the screen, uh, screen and roll is not defended properly. And Duncan had a little pep in his step. He said he was awful in game two. He was awfully good in game three. This really fuels your team when you see your veteran leader make a block, go into the stands to save the ball, and Danny Green ends up with two free throws at the other end. There's Duncan with another rebound. And this, the Heat just couldn't find the handle, couldn't find the pass, couldn't make the shots, and the Spurs took full advantage. How about Manu getting up? Three dunks in the game for Manu Ginobili, rolling back the clock a little bit. Tony Parker left the game with a tight hamstring. He'll get an MRI tomorrow, doesn't know if he'll play in game four. LeBron, could he make anything? No, he couldn't. Short answer, coming the other way now. Manu's open, but they don't need him. Corey Joseph. 
with the lay-in and the foul. Spurs by 15 after three. Great job right here with San Antonio. You know, they were the victim of Miami Heat's defensive pressure in game two. Well, the Spurs picked up that pressure in that third quarter and got some runouts. Excuse me, that was Corey Joseph. Now in the fourth quarter, it's all about the three, Tim. Yeah, I mean, that's defended well. That's deep into the shot clock. Chris Anderson, the hand in his face here again. Off the screen roll, gets a hand up, but it's just a little bit too late. And Danny Green right here has a little extra time, so he makes sure he's on balance when he lets this one fly. Now everything is just going for these role-playing three-point shooters of the San Antonio Spurs. Have you ever seen two three-point shooters this hot in the same game? Before? Very, very rarely when you talk about ro two role players. You might see a starter and then a guy coming off the bench get hot on the same night, but these are two guys that are not huge factors for this team offensively, and both of these guys went off. Green with 27 points, Neal with 24 points. Eric Spolstra after the game would say, we got what we deserve today as the Spurs win it by 36 points. That's the largest postseason loss in Heat history. Unbelievable. They really, San Antonio, you know, got it taken to them in game two. They certainly came back in a big way in this one and sent a message that they can run people off the floor as well.